I always remember when I was starting out and wanting to create a beautiful, magical experience that could also be therapy. Monument Valley always inspired me. That was also a micro game, something you didn't have to get stuck on, although you could get stuck on it. Arcade Therapeutics was really born out of about a decade of my research on a digital native cognitive training technique um, that shifts unconscious habits that we have in the world in how we pay attention, how we interpret experiences we have. And these unconscious habits can be huge blockers to positive psychological change. In this literature, we had these computerized but very, very dull, deadly dull kinds of experiences that we wanted to help people with. How does mobile technology influence that humanity. And about 12 or 14 years ago, I had the insight that, well, you know, why don't we actually embed these techniques, which are already made for screens, into games, and really try to meet people where they are, give them something that's engaging, fun, and makes them believe that positive change in their mental health is possible. And so that was really the birth of some of the technology and the research we did on the technology, which is seven randomized clinical trials and counting, so we're very science first. And now, really, it's that core that led to the founding of Arcade Therapeutics. If you can give someone medicine with joy, isn't that what we should be doing instead of saying, here, take your medicine? So that notion of, I think, that just was built into games already not only of enjoyment, not only of engagement, but of meeting people where they are, was really, I think, the insight, not just my personal insight, but the Games for Medicine movement. We have in our pipeline of games an addiction product. We have some data showing that we can reduce craving for alcohol with this very simple, casual game. In every situation, there's the possibility of positive or negative outcomes. Our flagship product called Star Starter RX is for the treatment of social anxiety disorder. We are in the process of submitting for FDA approval. We have designed our game to be brief. So we have dosages, and they range from six to 12 minutes a day a few days a week. And after just a month of this level of use, we've shown in our evidence with placebo-controlled randomized clinical trials that you can shift these unconscious habits of thinking in ways that decrease the burden of mental illness, in particular anxiety, depression, and addiction. We're optimizing for the fact that we have a tool that was made to be on screens, but we're not getting you stuck on that screen. So we're getting people back into the real world. That's how we have found our sweet spot in our approach. We are an anxiety reduction <laughs> intervention, so we also can't have the design of the game be increasing an experience that we're trying to modify. <laughs> it's going to be more of an experience that you can infuse your day with that helps bring you back to a calm place, to a focused place, to a peaceful place. You have to wait so long to get to a mental health professional, an addiction specialist. It's so inaccessible for so many people. You're giving some people the only treatment they'll ever need, which is great. Or you're tilling the soil to make subsequent treatment more effective because you're empowering people to actually start on their healing journey, their mental health journey. We want people to understand that healing can be actually a natural part of life, that it can be intuitive, that it can be something that's not stigmatizing. And so just the, you know, the medium is the message as well when it comes to games. Because when you have a game in the palm of your hand, you no longer feel like you're broken or an outsider. In quite the same way that you might feel as if someone's giving you a, a molecule, a medication, you know, to say, oh, you're broken, now fix it. It is really the future and it's a path that we would be unethical not to pursue.